Alright everyone, welcome to part 2 of Ask the King for September 2016. If you have not yet seen part 1, I strongly recommend you check it out first. That was all the patron questions for the month, and now we're moving on to the forum questions. So for those of you who posted up on the kingofhate.com forums, I picked the questions that I felt I could answer the best or and be entertaining while I answered them, okay? Alright, the first question is from Cody Carls, and he says the following... Do you ever get, did you ever get noise complaints over the years while recording back in your old condo in Connecticut? I recently went back to the 2012 GTA playthroughs and the rage was through the roof. I have to think at least a couple of the rage moments over the years have had people concerned. Thanks. Only really two times ever come to mind. Um, <clears throat> when I lived in that condo in Connecticut, I had a drunk neighbor. He was older. He was probably in his 50s or 60s. He lived alone. He was a miserable old drunk. Um, and he drank all the time. I mean, it was disgusting. He would drink all day. There were some days he would just be drunk all day. And he had a bad habit of getting drunk and then sitting on his back porch being drunk, screaming, saying stupid shit, getting on the phone. He was really just an idiot. And, uh, one time I remember I was playing and he was drunk and it was summer. So I had my back door open to try to get some air circulation and... He's over there. Now he hears stuff going on in my condo. He starts screaming, oh, shut up over there. And there were times when I talk, tried to talk to this guy. I tried to reason with him, all right? There's no reasoning with him when he's drunk. He's just a, a belligerent idiot when he's drunk, which is hilarious because when he's not drunk, oh, he's the nicest guy and he's apologetic, right? Probably because he knows that if you called him out for the shit that he did when he was drunk, he'd be incredibly embarrassed. There was one time he was so drunk, okay, it was the middle of the night, like 2 a.m., I'm not even kidding you. I was going to sleep, and he was drunk. He went to get the paper, which he had left from the morning, and then when he went back to his apartment, his door was locked, and he couldn't get in. So he's knocking on my door. Can you help me? Can you? Can I go through your back door and maybe climb over to my side, my back porch, so I can get in my back door? I'm like, this guy's a fucking moron. The only other time I could think of, I remember, I think it was during my bi original Bioshock playthrough. And if I remember correctly, uh, I the volume was really loud, and one of my neighbors from upstairs was, like, insane, came down to my door and started smashing on my door. Now, it's one thing if the noise is loud and you're knocking, and you say, hey, can you please keep it down? This bitch was, like, screaming, let me in! You could tell. Guess what? She was drunk. <laughs> yeah. You seeing a pattern here with the people where I used to live? And I didn't answer at all. And this is actually when I had just moved into my condo, maybe a couple uh, months. So I actually asked the previous owner of the condo, who I bought it from, who I had still had contact with at that time. I said, what's with the, the woman upstairs? She came bashing, b pounding on my door, screaming. It would have been one thing if she had just like nicely asked me to lower the volume or whatever. And he goes, dude, she's a drunk. We've had problems with her before. Like we would have a party and it wouldn't even be that loud. And she'd come down threatening and stuff. And basically he says, next time she does it, just call the police. And they'll arrest her because she's known for, like, being drunk and disorderly. I'm like, my God. Those were really the only two times. Never did I ever have any other complaints uh, about n noise uh, doing anything, you know, back then in Connecticut. Now, today, obviously, I wouldn't get any complaints. I'm in my own house. And, yes, there are other, you know, houses that are kind of connected to it. It's considered a townhouse, so it is kind of a connected triplex unit. But it's not like, like, it's soundproofing. I put soundproofing in here, you know. And I'm sure people can hear me saying stuff. But, you know, you don't hear, it's nowhere near like the paper thin walls that I used to have at the condo in Connecticut. So it's a lot different experience here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next question from Anthony77X. He says, hey, Phil, I'd like to know what are your thoughts on recent game developers deciding not to factor in any kind of story whatsoever into their games? Games like Titanfall, Star Wars Battlefront, and, and the original Journey, or just recently the game Inside. They've all been games that didn't include any kind of original story whatsoever. I actually disagree with that statement. I'm just reading his question, but I'll respond to it in a moment. <clears throat> I look back to Titanfall a couple of years ago. I remember developers saying that they felt confident that their game was going to be a success even without any kind of a story-based campaign. And when I look back at E3 this year, I remember the announcement of another game called Fee or Fey, I don't know how to pronounce it. And they said that game wouldn't have any kind of a coherent story either. My question to you is, do you think that game developers and publishers are becoming lazy in creating any kind of story to their games? Do you think that every game that's released should include a story mode campaign depending on what genre it is? <clears throat> 
this is an interesting question because Anthony is hitting upon something that I've been saying recently a lot. It seems to me that in the past few years has been this fad in gaming that we're going to sell you a game that only has some kind of an online gameplay aspect and it doesn't necessarily not only is there no single player mode there's no story there's no real narrative to be to be spoken of at all so some of the games of recent memory titanfall obviously that was a big one when it came out everyone was like can a game just you know be a success based on just multiplayer and titanfall you know the devs respawn entertainment were like oh don't worry we we really think this game will be a hit and the bottom line was, it did do pretty good in sales, because everyone took their word for it, and within two weeks, most people fucking stopped playing the game, because it's a piece of shit. It was so repetitive and boring, and just not anything really original about it, that after a couple weeks, you're bored with the fucking game. Another game that comes to mind from last year, um, uh, what the fuck, Evolve, right? A game where it only had, like, three or four monsters at launch, and they had to be unlocked gradually, it wasn't even like you could pick them, you had to keep playing the game repetitively to even get those monsters, only a few human characters at launch. And then within a few months, they're fucking selling you DLC. No story. Nothing whatsoever. It's just play the repetitive multiplayer over and 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 over. Now, there's other games that, as of late, have that kind of aspect. But they did attempt to at least put in some narrative. For example, Tom Clancy's The Division. Now that game, yeah, primarily it's online multiplayer grinding style gameplay, but there is a single player and it could be played cooperatively campaign as well. So at least the game has that aspect, right? A game from earlier this year, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, added in a story element. So even if you don't necessarily love the online ga gameplay component of the game, you still get a full game experience through the story. And by the way, there's been all these free expansions and DLCs for the game over the year that have added more of that single player content along with new, fresh, and for free multiplayer content. So there's two different kind of ways that you can do this style of game. And it seems to me that at least now in the modern era, a lot more of these games are realizing you need to have uh, the best of both worlds. You can't expect someone to pay $60 for a game that's just a multiplayer component when there are other people out there developing games that have both for the same price. You know what I mean? Now, in particular, some of the games that Anthony references, I agree and I disagree. So, in games like Titanfall and Star Wars Battlefront, I 100% agree. With games like Journey and Inside and the other game that he referenced, Faye or Fee, however you pronounce it, I disagree. Those games do have stories. The problem with those games is that they have no multiplayer component. You're talking about games that are just a single player experience and the story is not clearly or definitively explained. They're expecting you to buy their game, play it, and be okay with the fact that the story doesn't make sense. That it's not finished, it's not 100% coherent, it's not even maybe 100% there, it's there open for your interpretation. I call bullshit on that, all right? Journey was one of those games that I, in particular, very much so disagreed with the mainstream opinion. Because if you looked at all the mainstream media this year, hell, I even remember that year it was Total Biscuit had said, it's the game of the year, right? And I played the game and I'm like, this game is so underwhelming. And not to say that there weren't points in that game that were breathtaking, right? Beautiful sights to behold, but that's all it was, a breathtaking moment. It wasn't an overall amazing gameplay experience. The gameplay was very basic. It wasn't like there was anything insanely amazing you were doing during the game. The story had no definitive story. There's no spoken dialogue. There's nothing that you can figure out what the fuck's going on. It's all symbolic and open to your own interpretation. And I call bullshit on that. When I'm paying my hard-earned money... I don't want to fucking have to think my, for myself what this game's supposed to be. I want to fucking know what it is. Because I paid you money right? If I pay you money, I'm paying you for some kind of a fleshed out explanation of what I'm playing. Not just doing it and then having to figure it out for myself. I hate that. Um, now, there is an exception to this rule. I think games like puzzle games, in a lot of cases, mobile games, right? Where those games, a lot of them is just about the challenge of the puzzles or the repetition or the grinding of the gameplay of a mobile game. I don't think you need a complex fleshed out story, but let's face it. Puzzle games, it's the puzzle aspect that you're playing it for. Mobile games, most of them are free. So you, how can you complain that there's no complex story in a game you're playing completely for fucking free? You know what I mean? 
I'm sorry, but at least for me as a modern gamer, in 2016, I expect to get, when I'm paying my hard-earned money for a game, a coherent story that's actually fleshed out and explained, not that I'm left wondering what the fuck I just played, uh, gameplay mechanics that work, right? Graphics that are at least passable for the modern era. And if it's a multiplayer game, some kind of replayability that allows me to want to keep playing the game. I'll give you an example here of a game that actually works. Overwatch. Now, a lot of people might have issue with that. It has no single-player campaign, right? If you want actual story based on the characters, it's all in these FMVs that aren't even in the game. You have to watch them online, right? These little the animated clips about the different characters or whatever. I'll be honest with all of you. I never watched any of them. I haven't seen one of the videos for any of the characters in Overwatch because I don't give a fuck. The game isn't about story. It has multiplayer with a wide cast of characters that's diverse enough that every time you play the game, you're going to get a variety of an experience. It's not like Titanfall, where there's no story, and you play it, and within a week, you've seen everything in the game. No, because in, in Overwatch, there's, what, 21? Now there's, what, 22 characters or something? I'm trying to remember exactly how many there are. And a lot of them play completely differently. You could play it as, as a, a turret defense game with the dwarf character. You could do it as, uh, you know, a run-and-gun FPS game with, with a soldier. Or you could have a, ta you know, healing, tactical things, tank-like gameplay, melee combat... It's all so different. That's the, a perfect example of a game with no story, but it doesn't need it because they actually hit that perfect balance of gameplay to keep you coming back and not feel like you paid 60 bucks and you're bored within a week. So if anything, that's what needs to happen. If you're going to have a game with no multiplayer component, it very fucking well better have a gameplay mechanic that's amazing and hooks me or a coherent story. If it's not going to have a single player mechanic, it better be like robust and varied enough to hook me. But the problem is you're finding these games that are attempting to do one or the other and failing miserably. And that's the difference, the differential here that you're seeing. You know, a game like Inside, I loved playing Inside earlier this year. But when I beat it, I was so fucking disappointed. There was no definitive ending. You have no idea really what the fuck you just played. You just have to guess for yourself. And that's bullshit because you paid money for the game. You should have an actual fucking story. Okay. Next question is from Final Light, and he says, uh, Hey, Philip. You call me Philip? Almost no one calls me Philip but my mom and my dad, so that was kind of weird to be called Philip. Hey, Philip. I was wondering how tall you are because you look like you're above average, and how did you grow when you were a kid? Did you instantly grow up puberty, or were you always the bigger kid? Thanks and take care. Well, I am, depending on who you ask, either 5'11 or 6 feet tall. <clears throat> 5 feet 11 inches or 6 feet tall. It's weird because when I went to the doctor and had my height measured, uh, when I was like in, I'd say probably high school, college, the doctor said I was 5'11", but older people have measured me and said I'm 6 feet. Maybe it's the shoes, you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, but I think on my driver's license it says I'm 5'11". Now, that is kind of tall, but it's not overwhelmingly tall. It's not like I towered above everyone in high school. No, in fact, vice versa, a lot of people in high school seem to be really tall at least at my school, so it wasn't like I was the big guy or whatever. And no, I didn't super sprout up either. It was gradual, so it was kind of like a, along everyone else. When everyone else was growing, I was growing. I wasn't necessarily the bigger guy or the taller guy of all of them. Although it's funny because a lot of people from my videos don't think that I'm very tall. And then they meet me in person, and a lot of people have actually said this to me. Wow, you're tall from what I thought. So it's kind of funny that a lot of people think that I'm like a short guy or something because of my videos. And they meet me in real life, like, damn, he's actually kind of big, you know. Um, but no, it wasn't like I was the, the big kid or whatever in class, anything like that. All right, next question is from Industrial Gamer, and he says, Hi, Phil, I hope that things have been well for you. I recently did a video on this subject, and I wanted to get your personal take on it. Uh, why does enter what does entertainment mean to you? For myself, I find that entertainment has always been about storytelling, but it means different things to different people. What's your take on entertainment as a whole? See, that's an interesting question, because y you can just look at entertainment in the form of gaming, and just there, think about the different kinds of games. You got games that have just repetitive gameplay, but somehow you feel satisfa satisfied <clears throat> after, you know, repeatedly doing the same thing over and over and you get some kind of a reward for it, right? Grinding in a game and finally you get that rare piece of loot. Oh, man. And that feels great to you. That's entertaining. Some people like a great story, right? More narrative-based games like Heavy Rain and stuff like that versus games that have a high difficulty curve or a game that has a ton of required gameplay. Um, it really depends on the person. 
For me, I like a wide variety of stuff. I like challenge, but at the same time, I don't like challenge that's too gruelingly difficult. I like games with a grind. If I like games with a grind, it's games that I, I like to do as like a back burner thing. Like if I'm going to grind in a game, let me grind when I'm at night, I'm unwinding from my day, and I could do it on my couch, you know, on my phone in a mobile game. I can grind, blah, 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 on the game. And actually, my phone, I touched it, and I did something. Oh, crap. Oops. Uh, anyway, uh, let me keep talking while I fix this. Um, yeah, I like a game that you, it's not doesn't take too much attention or concentration. If you're going to grind in the game, you could just kind of let it... Uh, you could play it or whatever while you're doing something else, like watching television or whatever. That's the kind of entertainment I factor I get out of that. Um... I don't know. I like a wide variety of stuff, but it's funny because when you say entertainment, there's so many different things that could be entertaining. There's things on YouTube. Let's face it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a fan of me, the chances are there's things on YouTube that you don't get, just like me. Like There's things on YouTube that are incredibly popular that I can't watch for more than five seconds. I'm sorry, and you know, a lot of people will, will take issue with this. This is my personal preference. By no means take, it, take insult. I can't watch more than like 25 seconds of a PewDiePie video. I just can't. The guy's fucking voice... The, the affectations that he puts in his voice, the overacting, the screaming. It's meant for, like, a little kid. And I, I couldn't... The Fred, remember the guy Fred on YouTube? Holy fucking shit. I couldn't watch five seconds of his. So at least PewDiePie is... I could stomach for 25 seconds. Fred, I couldn't watch for five fucking seconds. I wanted to rip my fucking eardrums out so I never have to hear that fucking sound again. But those were hugely... They're hugely popular on YouTube. Like, I'm talking millions of views, millions of dollars, Right? So it's crazy that there's people that like that shit, you know? I, uh, I can't stand that stuff. I, you know, there's some things that, they're guilty pleasures of mine as well. There is some reality TV, like the cooking shows, like Hell's Kitchen or uh, MasterChef that I like, but I think I like that more because I get to learn about the culinary side of the world, which I really am not well versed in, and I get to see that kind of stuff and say, oh, that's kind of cool, because that's something that I never was really educated in at all in my lifetime. Um... But entertainment is a wide, a wide spectrum. There's some people that just like watching sports. That's their entertainment, sports. Competitive nature, anything that's competitive sport, that's them. Me, I can go for that every once in a while. But for me, not everything in life is a massive competition. You know what I mean? I, when I'm relaxing, I don't necessarily want to see two teams always going at it head to head and they have to fucking... Ah, rah, 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 rah. No. I, I watch that every once in a while, but an entertaining narrative on a television show or something like that also is very engrossing for me. So for me, I don't know if I can say there's one, you know, this is what I like as entertainment. There's a lot of things that I like. One thing that I actually don't really like in particular, or at least not that I don't like it, but it just hasn't been a part of my life, is music. You know, all over the years, especially on this show, Ask the King, people have asked me, Phil, what's your favorite kind of music? What music do you listen to? And I'm like, I don't. And they're like, what? No, I don't. I don't listen to music. When I drive in my car... I don't have any music playing. When I'm at home and I'm relaxing, we're either watching television or I'm playing a grinding in a game. No music. I'm just not a music guy. When I was in high school and my teen years, I was heavily into like alternative rock and, and, and hard rock and metal and that kind of stuff. And then I got into rap and stuff during my college days because my other friends were into that and stuff. That's just why it's funny. You'll hear me reciting a lyric from like fucking, you know, Jay-Z or, or Puff Daddy or, or Eminem. And you're like, how the fuck does Phil know that? Because I, I was into that. At that time, I was heavily into, you know, Dr. Dre and stuff like that. You know, DMX. I knew all their songs. I was listening to all their music when they were popular. But since then, I would say probably college. Right after college, that was it. It was like, I, I would more rather, I would much rather do other things than just kind of sit and have a song playing, at least. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't like to be distracted. I like to focus on stuff. And, I mean, music is distracting. I don't know. But music has never been really a major form of entertainment for me for, like, the past decade. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> the next question. Actually, let me see how many questions I have left. Two pages. So we're halfway done. We're actually halfway done, which is perfect because we're about halfway done with the time that I have to film. There you have it. Uh, the next question is from Richie7. He says, uh, how did you come to pick Washington State as the place that you wanted to move to? Furthermore, how did you choose the specific town and condo from across the country? Do you have friends or family that were there and were able to help you, or did you do everything long distance? Um... <clears throat> That's an interesting question. Obviously, three years ago, if you were paying attention and, and were a fan of mine, you would know the answer, but a lot of people aren't three-year-long fans, so let's go a little bit into it here. Um, I used to live in Connecticut. I lived in Connecticut my whole life until a few years ago, and at that point in my YouTube career, whoops, at that point in my YouTube career, I knocked my hat and now it's all screwed up, um, 
I wanted to change and I knew with the amount of money that I was making and all of that 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 was the right time to do it because I knew that YouTube wasn't going to become it wasn't going to always be this insanely lucrative thing for me. At that point in my life I had paid off all of my debt. I had no outstanding debt on like credit cards or anything. So I was good to go and I said if I'm going to ever move out of Connecticut I need to do it now. So I started doing research. And the first thing I researched was taxes because the bottom line is in the state of Connecticut I was paying insane taxes. I was paying state tax, income tax, federal income tax. I was paying insane property taxes, insane vehicle taxes, basically sales tax, everything in Connecticut was high. And I did the math and I realized that if I just moved to certain states, I could be saving over, I'm not even kidding you, tens of thousands of dollars a fucking year just because I live somewhere else, right? And I'm not saying that because I'm making more or less money. No, just because I'm in a physical other location, I didn't have to pay as much money to taxes. I was scratching my head like, why the fuck am I staying in Connecticut? Like, why would I stay here? You know, yeah, my family's there, but outside of just my, my parents, there's nothing really that was attaching me to be there besides Italian food, which is amazing in, in Connecticut. And I know that because now I live in Washington and there's a fault of Italian food out here sucks. Um... But was it really worth it just to see my parents once a week and eat Italian food to stay there and pay tens of thousands of dollars pissing it away a year? Fuck no. So I did my research and I started looking into states that have low taxes. Some of the states that came to mind, Florida, Texas, and Washington State. Okay. Washington State has no state income tax. So I pay the same federal tax as I was paying when I lived in Connecticut, but no state tax. So right off the bat, thousands of dollars in my pocket into the business that was just getting pissed away living in Connecticut. Now the trade-off in Washington state is the sales tax here is much higher. The sales tax here is 9%. In Connecticut, it was six. But yeah, that's a 3% increase on what I choose to spend. So if I spend more money in Washington state, then I'll be paying more tax. But in Connecticut, they were just taking it out of my fucking paycheck. Like that was it. You owe us this giant chunk of money just because you're physically fucking here versus in Washington, I have to actively choose to spend the money to be taxed more on it, okay? So overall, I'm still saving a ton of money and it makes sense. It makes more fucking sense to be here. That was number one. Number two was climate, and I was looking at, I want a moderate climate, because in Connecticut, on the East Coast, you get the fucking hot-ass, humid fucking summers that suck monkey shit, you get the torrential downpour floods, but then in the, oh, it's winter, now you get fucking crazy-ass blizzards, you get fucking ice storms and shit, I, and with my back condition and stuff, I was having a hard time with things like digging my car out of fucking snow every year and stuff like that, you know, I have a back injury, a lower back injury, that every once in a while rears its ugly head and my back hurts. So I couldn't do that shit anymore. So I wanted to move to a warmer climate where I wasn't going to have snow and shit. But then I started looking. I was like, Florida, oh my god, Florida, they have the humidity all year. I didn't want that. Texas, they have crazy overbearing heat for a lot of the year. So really, when I was looking at all the climates, Washington State made the most sense. It's more moderate. Yes, there's heat in the summer. Yes, there's cold in the winter. But usually it's in between somewhere. We actually have long and extended periods of like fall and spring here where you get that moderate temperature. Right now, I'm in my office. My window's open. I'm fine. I'm not hot at all, which is awesome. You know, it's awesome to have that and not have to worry about I'm going to be burning up or whatever. In Connecticut... When, in the summer, I was burning the fuck up, and in the winter, I was freezing my balls off. Here, for most part of the year, I'm fine. And it's funny. It's actually funny because when uh, we moved here, I had had all these clothes that I brought from Connecticut, these heavy clothes for, like, the winter. I haven't put them on once, and they're just sitting in the drawers, and we're thinking about donating them because I used to have them. You know, I actually went and bought long sleeve shirts and all this stuff for Connecticut. I never need them here because the, the weather's so moderate, which is awesome. So I might just donate all that shit. Um, now, when it came to planning the move, all right, um, it was difficult because what we needed to do was basically be able to see houses that we couldn't see. So what we started doing was looking online. Let me tell you, online is a lot different. It's so different now. You could get so some places you can get virtual walkthroughs of houses. They'll take pictures of the inside so you can actually see what it looks like. And they have all this information listed online for houses now, which is great. Back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that didn't exist. You had to physically be there to see it to know what you were getting. Now you can at least get an idea by looking online. So we started to look at uh, different areas of Washington State, what the income was in these areas, what the home cost was in these areas. And what I actually did, I went to a couple banks and I tried, I said, based off of my credit, based off of what I make a year, 
what is the like the uh, an estimate of the loan that they could give me? And they gave me an estimate of a loan. I was like, okay, so that's the like the high range of what I would spend. Let's look for a house a little bit under what the maximum loan is that they would give me. And that's exactly what we did. So, <clears throat> sorry, my phone, because I hit it before it screwed up. Now it seems okay. Okay. So, basically, we looked at three different areas of Washington based off of the loan that I could get. Okay. And then... We started looking at houses virtually, and I got in contact with a real estate agent in this area who started talking to me over the phone, and we started to have email conversations about what we were looking for, okay? And after about maybe four months of going back and forth with this woman and explaining to her what we were looking for in a house and stuff like that, um, she had narrowed it down to like five places in this local area right outside of Seattle. So technically... I am, I do live in Seattle, but I don't live in Seattle. It's really weird. Like, they call it a different thing, but they still list things as Seattle here. I don't get it. I mean, it's Seattle area. I don't know. But we're basically 35, 40 minutes from Seattle if we just drive. We're in, like, the outskirts. We can get right into the city whenever we want. That's what we wanted. We wanted a city or a town that was very close to Seattle, so when we want to go there, we can, but that it's not in Seattle, so you're not paying more taxes, and you're not having to deal with all that traffic and shit. <clears throat> so... We made a trip out here in April of 2014, and we kind of treated it half and half. Half was going to be looking at houses, and half was going to be a vacation to Seattle to see, do we like this area enough after being here for a week on vacation? Would we want to live here, right? So the first half of the week, we looked at houses. We For two straight days, we were just going from house to house to house, and we looked, I think it was like six or seven houses. We even filmed in the houses. We vlogged, and those vlogs can be found right here on the King of Hate Vlogs if you want to check them out. You can actually see all the houses and stuff when we walked through them at first and i actually pulled the viewers i said what do you think out of all these homes which one looks good and they actually gave opinions and there was actually polling and stuff and voting and then the rest of that week we spent on vacation in seattle uh doing stuff there and this was the first time i'd ever been to seattle so we were doing all touristy kind of stuff and we had a lot of fun in the, the main city of seattle and after that week, we determined this is a place we'd like to live. The weather's moderate and good. The taxes aren't sky high. There's an awesome city that we can roll into whenever we want. By the way, the people out here are very fucking different. You can basically be however you want out here. You can be a hipster. You can be a, 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 you know, a techie. You could be a geek. You could be any race or nationality. Even Middle Eastern people like you know, are out here all the time, and no one harasses them and calls them fucking terrorists and shit. That's good because it's fucking ridiculous the way that America treats these people. I'm so pissed off about it, honestly. But anyway, um, you can dress however you want. You can do whatever you want. No one fucking gives you shit here. No one gives you the fucking st the, 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 the stink eye. No, you know, you can be your own person out here and no one gives a fuck. No one judges you for what you do or, you know what I mean, or how you look or anything like that. It's a different world. Like when I, where I came from, there were all these racial tensions and all this. None of that's out here. It's fucking so different. It's such a different fucking world in Washington State than where I came from on the East Coast. Seriously. Um, so just so many positives, right? And we decided we wanted to move here, and then we looked at the houses, and we narrowed it down to one, and we ended up kind of making an offer on it, and then we ended up getting the house, all right? So it was a long pro The whole process itself from start to finish took about a year. Uh, we had to look at different locations in the United States, see what kind of a loan I could get based off of my income and all of that, and then trying to narrowing it down, and then finally homing in on an area. It's a very lengthy process, very time-consuming, and by the way, it is stressful too, because it doesn't always work out the way you want. It took a while for me to get this fucking loan, because the banks were telling me, well, what you make isn't, isn't consistent income, and I'm like, well, I've been doing it since 20, uh, 2008, I've been making money with it since 2011, it's 2014. Three years of consistent income isn't enough. Well, no, because it's YouTube and you're not hired by a, you know, a company with a salary. They didn't want to give me a, it was a nightmare in a lot of ways, but we got it done. We moved. Couldn't be happier. Hopefully that was some of the information will help you out. But my recommendation, if you're looking to move a long distance, online stuff is great. Now you can find real estate agents right in wherever area you want to move. Usually all the information you want of the homes is online. It's really good. And Definitely take a trip out there to see the places in person because there were a few homes that looked good. And then we saw them in person. We were like, eh, eh, no, 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 no. There's things about these things that stick out like a sore thumb that we do not want. Okay. Uh, next question is from, uh, let's see here. Shit. Oh, I read it wrong. The name's way down here. From Planet Jeff. He says, uh, 
Hey Phil, I'm a longtime viewing fan and I'm a patron since you even first started doing that last year. In my mind, the entertainment that I've gotten out of your channel is actually more bang from your book than other paid subscriptions like Netflix, so keep up the good stuff. My question is, if you ever tried to do a special patron push or goal, or if one group of your uh, supporters was willing to able to donate large enough amounts for you to consider purchasing a second Windows-based PC... Would you be willing to, to reconsider your t decision to not do PC exclusive playthroughs? You've repeatedly described your reasons for not doing PC games is because of the overwhelming tasks that it would take for one PC to both play the game and capture and stream it all at the same time. <clears throat> if you had a second PC in the mix, would that be a possibility? Thanks and keep up the great work. Um, <clears throat> let, me, let me give you guys some perspective. When I first moved here in 2014... Everyone was like, Phil, you really should start doing PC-based stuff. Now's your opportunity because you're moving, you're in a new office, you're in a new place. You can set it up however you want. And I said, you know what, fair enough. I'm going to order a new high-end, top-of-the-line PC that could do whatever I want. And I even ordered specifically specs that people recommended to me and all of this. And this PC comes. $3,000, by the way, because I don't want to build it myself because I don't want to get into that again. I've done it as a hobby in, in, in the past. And it became a money pit for me. So I paid three grand for this fucking high-end PC. It shows up. And I cannot play games and capture and stream on it. I just can't. There's no way to do it. When I do it, there's massive... It's one or two things. If I just try to do it using like the native CPU settings and everything, massive frame rate drops. All right? Or if I try doing something like everyone says, use shadow play. Why don't you use shadow play? Capture using shadow play, which is basically like a, th a third party method of doing the capture that doesn't take up a lot of computer resources. But the files are insane. Like if I wanted to do 1080p 60 frames per second shadow play videos, a 10 minute video would be like 25 gigs or larger. So we're talking taking the size of my videos and ballooning them tremendously, which means insane amounts of upload time. YouTube would have tons of issues processing large videos because they do. The bigger the video and file size, the bigger problems YouTube has with it. So it wouldn't work. Either way, doing what I wanted to do on this PC that I bought doesn't work. And it's hilarious because people to this day still say, well, I can play a game on my PC and capture and stream it. Yeah, do you do 1080p, 60 frames per second, high quality, high bit rate streaming while you're also capturing at that high bit rate? Do your videos look anywhere near as fucking good as mine? And of course, the answer is no. Yeah, you could technically do it and you suffer massively in video quality. Considering I spent $3,000 on a PC, I wasn't going to take a dip in video quality to play PC games. Now, unfortunately, since the move, I'm strapped for cash. I have been since I moved. I'm in a lot of debt. Last year, unfortunately, my business saw a lot of trolling and negativity that hurt me in the realm of tens of thousands of dollars, and I've never recovered from it. My business is not making the, the much money that it was making before those copyright strikes, the false copyright strikes, hit me last year. And I don't know if I'll ever get back to where I was, honestly, because I just don't show up in YouTube search rankings anymore because of the, the trollish actions of a few fucking kids. So the bottom line is I just don't have money. I don't have $3,000, right? Or even I don't even have $1,000 to drop on another PC to just be sitting here and setting it up and doing it to do, you know, a, a, a setup where I could do PC gaming the way that I do console gaming. I just can't. If a bunch of people came together that were supporters of mine and said, Phil, we would like to donate said amount of money for you to buy a gaming PC that's a top-of-the-line one for today, and you could use your current PC to do the capture and streaming while you're gaming on this other PC, would you consider it? I would say yes, with an asterisk, all right? Here's the asterisk. Number one, someone would have to fucking help me with it, because I don't know two shits about it i would need to have basically have you have this is the pc with these specs this is what you need and no it's not we're buying components from all these places and building it. i cannot build a pc it's just not going to happen okay i'll fuck it up and everyone's money will be wasted so it's a no it's a definite no there have to be a pre-built pc from somewhere that could definitely handle high-end gaming okay that's number one and number two, someone would have to help me set it up to work with this other PC because I don't know about how to you know the video feed from one to the other as an input and all. I would need some guidance of someone who already does this. All right. The other thing is that I would have to strongly emphasize this: 
even if it happened, it, let's say all of a sudden out of nowhere, a bunch of patrons came together and said, Phil, we would like to do a special donation drive for you of $1,500 to buy a high-end gaming PC or whatever. And it happens and I buy it. We would have to figure out like what games benefit from being played on PC. What are these PC exclusive games that I absolutely must play that I'm missing out on? And the bottom line is if you actually look at them, how many of them are there really? Maybe a dozen a year? And are they really like XCOM 2 was one of the big ones this year. Yeah, that wasn't some huge, giant, insane AAA bestseller game. In fact, most people just didn't talk about it because it was a PC exclusive for the longest fucking time. It's only just got its, its console port this week. So, you know what I mean? Like, what games are definitively PC exclusive that I'm missing out on that I need to buy a second PC to play? Is there really a demand for that? Because the bottom line is... I, after I got this PC, I said, oh, let's do some stuff, and I did, like, I did a few sessions in streaming of, like, Team Fortress 2, and some other stuff PC exclusive, and I played some PC exclusive games that it could handle, it's not like anyone really honestly cares, it's not like I'm, wow, Phil got this crazy attention because he's doing PC stuff, no one really cares, it seems to me like PC has its own kind of audience, and there are YouTubers who do PC exclusive stuff and they're known for it. And for me to all of a sudden jump out of the realm of doing the mainstream AAA console games and now going to like PC exclusive stuff, I don't know. Would it pick up? Like some people have always said, Phil, why don't you play? There's so many indie games on PC. Why don't you like once a month do a session of just checking out like, like a bunch, bunch of indie games? Would people care? I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, it's not that I'm against it. It's certainly not that I'm anti-PC. I just don't know if there's a market with my viewer base and stuff, or could I build up a market? Would people stop watching, or, or, or people who already watch other people do this PC-exclusive stuff start coming to watch me do it? I don't know. I don't know if that would happen, you know? And so this particular person, you know, Planet Jeff, what I would say, Planet Jeff, is this. If you really feel this way, right, try seeing if in this community of people, that watch my stuff, if there is some kind of common interest of people who would want to see me play PC stuff, right, what that PC exclusive stuff would be, and if there are people who would be interested in trying to doing a fundraiser or whatever for me to get this second PC. For me, the bottom line is I'm already so busy with the stuff that I do that I'm not going to go out of my way and just all of a sudden do this. You know what I mean? I'm not because I think that would kind of be like dishonest because honestly, do I have a massive demand or a massive desire to be playing PC exclusive stuff? No, and no one's really in the past few years been able to convince me since 2014 when I moved here and I found out I can't do PC exclusive stuff on this PC. No one's convinced me otherwise that I needed to. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you missed out on a couple games. Big deal. So if, you, if there is this interest, right, then where is it? I need to know. I need to have it be verbose and people need to speak up and say, here's what you could do. And there would be massive interest and people would come to watch you. And I haven't gotten that impression whatsoever since, since 2014. I'm just saying, okay? I'm not saying it's out of the question, but I need to see it and, you know, let me know. So, hey, follow up on this. Anyone who's interested, follow up on it. Contact me, contact other people, see if there's interest, see if, you know, if it would be viable to even get a PC for a reasonable price and get this going with a setup, right? But the bottom line is how many people really are going to viably step up and donate a ton of money for something that I'd only be using a few times a year? I don't know if it would even be, you know what I mean? Would it even be that big of a deal? I don't know. All right, next question is from, P oh, actually, all right, I'll do one or two more quick questions and then I'll take a break. And then we'll come back and we'll finish up, all right? All right, so the next question is from Picky Eater. He says, Phil, I'm a one-year-long viewer of yours. This is actually my first forum post. I wanted to know if you've ever considered trying out the Mega Man Legends series. Because uh, both 1 and 2 are currently on PSN to be playing. To be played, excuse me. Uh, I actually just downloaded and played Mega Man Legends 2 myself recently, and I started to think how if you did a playthrough of it, you know, it would be cool seeing you run through things like the Nino Ruins, or fighting Glide's Bird Bots, or dealing with the Soul Kata Boss, and the like. Um, the Mega Man Legends series are games that came out during a period of time when I was just into competitive fighting games. Now, every once in a while, I would dabble in a console game here or there. But that era, I was, like, into competitive fighting games. My hobby was going to arcades and playing games, traveling the country, playing these games. So, really, I missed out on a whole generation. That whole late PS1, PS2, um, late Dreamcast, well, actually, all of Dreamcast, um, 
And what was the other console during that time frame? GameCube, uh, original Xbox, that whole era I pretty much missed out on because I was so into fucking fighting games. And it was funny because the only consoles I, like, I owned a PS2, the only reason I owned it was to get the ports of fighting games. So, <clears throat> yeah, in a lot of ways, yeah, I missed out. I don't even know how those Mega Man Legends game play or anything like that. It's certainly something I would consider for like a downtime game or a marathon or something at some point. But it's not something, obviously, that I would drop main new games or anything to play. But yeah, that's a consideration. And thank you for your first time post. That's one of the reasons why I actually picked it out. Because I thought this would be a cool question to answer from someone who's new. Alright, one final question. Then we'll take a break and we'll come back with the conclusion. Alright? The final question here for this part from Kill Chan says, If there's anything else you'd like to do on YouTube, if you had the time or chance to do it besides what you're already doing, what would it be? Wow, guess what? You're not going to believe this answer. I've been waiting for this question. I want to be a male stripper. Here we go. No, I'm kidding. That's not what it's going to be. Um, here's the thing. It's kind of funny. Leanna in particular has, has said this. And over the years as I've done things for YouTube, my other friends who've been around me say this. They say, Phil, you have the ability to take a song. And basically, much like Weird Al Yankovic, on the fly, I can make parodies of songs that are really freaking funny. So I'll be singing a song you know, a catchy tune that we heard somewhere, and I'll change the lyrics to something funny or pertinent that we're doing at the time, and people think it's great. Like I said, like Weird Al, he had that uncanny ability to take a song, make a parody of the song, and it would be amazing, and sometimes people would like that better than the original freaking song, right? And Weird Al has made an entire career he, of, yes, he does his own original music. He actually is a quite good kind of satirical um parody style original musician he has original songs that are quite good one of the songs that i love from him is everything you know is wrong i love that fucking song um but his parodies are great i think i honestly and this is i know some people would be like oh fucking bullshit i honestly think that if i had the means to do it i could make an insanely entertaining youtube channel where i parody songs with things in pop culture like television movies uh, video games, that kind of stuff, anime, I could make parody songs with different lyrics of all these different things, but I just don't have the means, I have no musical prowess, so I can't make a score, right, I can't make a parody version of a song that people know, I have no idea how to do that, obviously I don't have high level video editing skills, right, I don't have a movie studio where I could film people acting and shit, I've got a cheap ass green screen uh, in the garage that sadly... I haven't been able to implement, and I could do a little bit with that, but it's not great. You know what I mean? If I had friends who were in the filmmaking industry and friends who were musicians, and I had all these friends who wanted to collaborate and make this parody kind of music channel, I almost promise you that it would be incredibly popular on YouTube. But that's just something that I don't think will ever happen. I have this knowledge and this uncanny ability to do something comedic in my head, and I have no outlet for it because I don't have the, the, the means or... Uh, the uh, connections and the sad part is I almost think from my own personal experience I think there's tons of people like this on the planet earth they have talent they can make you laugh they can entertain you they can do something and just because they don't have the means they have no outlet to actually have that talent be shown to others and it sucks it does because you know uh, one day we'll watch uh, an anime right we'll be watching Dragon Ball and all of a sudden, the hamsters will start doing something. And I'll make a sing sing about that hamsters doing this and hamsters do ba do. And I'll just make up lyrics on the fly. And Luriana will burst out fucking laughing. So that's great. You know, you have this great, you know, great ability to do that. It's so hilarious. And I'm like, yeah, I, I never can't do anything with it. I have a YouTube channel and I can't fucking do anything with it. It sucks. <laughs> of course, now people will say, yeah, well, you know, may why don't you have those connections? Look. I'm just one guy who sits there and makes videos. I sit here and I record my reactions to video games. I edit videos. I'm not a studio. I'm not a team of people. I have no financial backing. I have no clout. So if people came to me and one and said, Phil, I have this talent. I have that talent. Let's collaborate. That's one thing. I have no clout to go. I don't even know any other YouTubers who I would be able to go out there. You know what I mean? And network and say this stuff. So... It is what it is. Hey, at least you got your answer. Maybe someone will see this video and I'll be contacted. And all of a sudden, uh, in 2017, I'll be launching this hilarious parody song channel that will get 5 billion views. I'll be filthy rich, rolling in dough. I'll be able to buy my own gaming PC. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah, right. Anyway, that's it for this part of Ask the King. I will be returning with the third and final part, which will have the final forum questions and Twitter questions. So you won't want to miss those. All right, everyone. I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back shortly.